been red hot. He's got a seven game hitting streak going, including this home run he hit here last night. The Orioles are not done. David Lowe had one at bat. He went deep, hit a home run off Sergio Santos. The Orioles with three more home runs last night. They've hit 70 on the season. Kenny, it is bunched up in the East. Now the Yankees and the Rays essentially tied atop the division. The Blue Jays have won 10 in a row. They're one back. The Orioles have moved to within two, and the Red Sox continue to struggle. The Red Sox are seven off the pace. Let's talk about today. Today's pitching matchup brought to you by People's United Bank and A. See what know how can do for you. The rookie Mike Wright gets a start for the O's. Two and one, 2.96. Adam Warner has pitched very well for the Yankees. Four and four with a 3.64 ERA. Sit back, enjoy some baseball when we get back. Lineups, first pitch, baseball, Yankees and the Orioles next, right here on Yes. Radiation Centers of New York. When it comes to fighting cancer, precision is everything. Call 844-2-RADIATION-DOC. By Heroes Charge, the hit mobile game available on the App Store and Google Play. Download now. And by your Tri-State BMW Centers. Back here at Oriole Park at Camden Yards, the Orioles have taken the field. And we are about to honor America with a rendition of our national anthem by Sergeant First Class Randy White from the U.S. Army Field Band. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's Bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangle banner yet wave or the Wow, that is quite a rendition, great voice. Kenny, did they always go O in the middle of the National Anthem, even way back when? 
Yeah, I think they did. Yeah. Yeah, it's sort pretty of pretty cool tra tradition. It is a tradition, yeah. All right, so the Orioles are on the field, and Mike Wright will take his warm up tosses, and why don't we take a look at the Yankees starting lineup, which is presented by Lexus. Brett Gardner's in left field, and he's going to lead off, batting second and playing third base. Chase Headley, the DH is Alex Rodriguez. He's going to bat third. Cleaning up first baseman Mark Teixeira. The right fielder is Garrett Jones, as Beltran has the day off. Garrett will bat fifth, batting sixth, and playing second base, Stephen Drew. D.D. Gregorius, the shortstop, will bat seventh, batting eighth and catching John Ryan Murphy. And the rookie, Mason Williams, in center field, he's going to bat ninth. Brett Gardner will be leading off for the Yankees. He'll be facing the 25-year-old right-hander, Mike Wright, who's making his fifth start in the major leagues. You can check out his record, 2-1, 2.96 ERA. That's pretty good. 21 hits in 24 in the third innings. Let's check out the pitcher's scatter report. Brought to you by your Tri Honda dealers. How about this? The right stuff. When Wright was called up from the minor leagues, the Orioles were told he threw low to mid-90s. When he started against the Angels, he was throwing mid to high 90s. So the Orioles were surprised with the velocity as he pitched very, very well against the Angels in his Major League debut and daydreaming. His two wins have come in day games. He's 2-0, and the one loss in the night game. And he was sent down to the minor leagues because of secondary pitches. He needed to work on his slider, his curve, and his change. But the fact is, Miguel Gonzalez went on the disabled list, and the Orioles called Mike Wright back to the big leagues. Well, they're looking for the sweep. This is the defense that Showalter has behind right. And it's presented by Geico, Reimold, Jones, and Snyder left to right in the outfield. In the infield, Manny Machado, J.J. Hardy, Ryan Flaherty, and Chris Davis third to first. Caleb Joseph behind the plate. They will not use weeders in back-to-back -back games coming back from Tommy John surgery. And Kenny told you about Mike Wright on the mound. So Showalter with the win yesterday moved ahead of Hank Bauer. For all time managerial wins with the O's. He is now in third place. He's got a long way to go to catch number one. Number one is number four, Earl Weaver. <laughs> Yankees 33 and 28. They've lost three in a row. Garden is ready. Wright is ready. And let's do it here in Baltimore. First pitch is up and away, and we are underway. Home plate umpires Andy Fletcher, Jordan Baker at first, Paul Emmel at second, and the crew chief Jerry Meals is over at third. What a one. Right out of East Carolina University, that's in Greenville, North Carolina. He is a former pirate, East Carolina Pirates. In fact, we have uh, two North Carolina pitchers going today. Adam Warren for the Yankees. University of. One and two. Yeah, right made the start against the Angels on uh, May 17th. Seven and third innings, no runs, four hits. Came right back. He got a win in that game. No decision against the Marlins. Seven innings, three hits, and no runs in that game. Impressive start to his career. Big kid, six foot six, 215 pounds, 25 years old, third round draft pick, 2011 draft. And his major league debut, as Kenny mentioned, this year in May. And the 2 2. Foul ball. You know, one of the byproducts of having. Jacoby Ellsbury on the disable list for a long period of time. Brett Gardner's been in there just about every single day. Now, every once in a while, Joe Girardi would give Gardner a day off, but he doesn't have that ability with his main leadoff hitter out of there. Brian Casper, Yankee GM, said on Friday he believed that Ellsbury would be back before the All Star break. That's good news. And the 2 2. 96 inside, 3 and 2. What'd you say? Your right is 6 6. 6 6. 201. 15. Mm -hmm. That's kind of thin. That fastball wasn't thin. 96 miles an hour. And the 3 2. 
Slow roller, going to be a very tough play with the speedy Gardner. It's an infield single to start the game. Let's check out the game time weather presented by Bigelow T. It's 91 degrees. Not much wind, but humidity is 51%. It's partly cloudy right now, and there is a chance of a thunderstorm. Kind of threatening clouds overhead the, uh, the warehouse in right field. Hope it holds off. Oh, you're on your way to Miami, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. You think there'll be a chance of thunderstorm in Miami? But they've got a roof. They do have a yeah. roof. Yeah. Well, Gardner's showing off his speed early. Let's see if he continues to do so while he's on first base, thinking about second. He does have one steal in this series. Upstairs to Chase Headley. Chase looking for career home run number 100. Mm -hmm. Had a good day, uh, or a good night last night. Chase Headley had three hits. That was his fourth three hit game of the season. Five seasons in the minor leagues, right? Was 33 and 21 with a 3.96 ERA. He's considered the seventh best prospect in the Orioles system. And his last start before being sent down was against uh, Houston at Minute Maid Park. And. Uh, that was his roughest start. He gave up eight hits and five runs in five innings, including a couple of home runs. 2 1. Goes off speed, clips the outside corner. 2 and 2. Yeah, one thing that was a good changeup, but the only thing good about it to me was he got it over the plate in a good spot. He really slowed his motion down, and uh, Major League hitters will adjust to that. They can see you slow your motion down, they know a changeup's coming. You have to have the the same arm speed. It's all about the grip with the changeup. Orioles have six straight wins. It's been an up and down season for them as well. Four of the teams in the American League East are, are 500 or over. Just the Red Sox under 500. You know, you talk about the, the standings. You know, the Blue Jays have been hot. The Orioles have won six straight. Blue Jays even better, 10 in a row. And you can see one reason why they've done it the run scoring is up. <laughs> Look at the Blue Jays, seven and a half runs a game. That's what they're averaging. The Orioles almost seven. Runner goes, and that's fouled off. And both of those teams have been pitching. Their team ERA is under three during their streaks. Yeah, they are rolling. Now, the Yankees have had a, a good streak during the course of the year, too. But it seems to be all these teams have been kind of up and down, up and down. There's been, uh, I guess, the most consistent of them all has been the Rays. They've hung around 500 the whole time. Uh huh. And every time they come to Chris Archer, they seem to win. He is their top starting pitcher, one of the best in the league. Runner goes again. 3 2, fly ball to right field. Snyder makes the play, and Gardner heads back to first. You can see how the outfield defense here by the Orioles, and this goes back to the days of Nick Markakis in right field, really helped on that play. That ball was hit to the gap. And you play off the line here as a right fielder to guard the gaps. Down the line is very close. The ball's hit well down the line. It's going to be a home run anyway. So they're trying to take away the doubles and the triples. That ball might have fallen in. If uh, Snyder were not placed properly. The boos you hear at Camden Yards, well, they're for Alex Rodriguez, who hit his 666th career home run yesterday. A two run opposite field shot with Chase Headley aboard. He goes that way again. It's a high fly ball. Snyder is there to make the play for the second half. 
The thing about that home run by A Rod yesterday pushed him over 2,000 runs batted in. Only one other player has had that many. As we take a look at the home run last night, A Rod now with 2,001 runs batted in. It's been an odyssey to say the least. He's had 14 100 RBI seasons, 100 or better, including 156 with the Yankees. That was uh, 2007. That was his high water mark. A lot of run production. A lot of people argue, well, uh -huh. how about Babe Ruth? Well, they didn't start counting RBIs as an official statistics in, until two, 1920. But they know how many he had, but for some reason they're not including it. Otherwise, Ruth would be in second place mm -hmm. and Alex would be in third. But the way it is right now, officially, only one other man has had more RBIs, and that's Hank Aaron. Teixeira hits a high fly ball down the left field line. Reimold on the run, and that's going to be a fair ball. Here comes Gardner, and he will score. It's an RBI double for Teixeira, and the Yankees are on the board. It's 1-0. Well, Michael, it was just a case of fair or foul, and I believe the ball hit right on the foul line. Teixeira, ball sinking away, fastball, and he goes that way. And it's just a matter of whether fair or foul. Reimold on the run has great range in left field. He can't get this one and the ball bounds up. You see the chalk just fly up as the ball hits right on the foul line. The Yankees have the lead. Gardner, of course, can score from first base with two outs. He's off with the crack of the bat. The sheriff now with 47 runs batted in. Here's Garrett Jones getting a start in right field. Now a long run. On a very hot Sunday by Brett Gardner and after he crossed home play he stood in foul territory there first base side for a little bit to catch his breath and then finally headed back to the dugout. I think at this stage I would have done the same thing. Here's what Michael's talking about. Gardner, of course, with a tremendous speed, no problem scoring from uh, first base with two outs. And uh, yeah, that's what Michael's talking about, catching his breath. It's that sort of day here in Baltimore. Right back here and under our booth. So, one of the formulas for the Yankees winning has come. Uh, Come fourth here in the first inning. They've scored more first inning runs than anybody. And they score a run here in the first today. And the Orioles are much better when they score first. They're 24 and 12 when they score first. The 1 2. Outside at 95. You know, one thing about Wright, the left handed batters have hit him much better than righties. And we take a look at this last pitch. He had movement on it just off the corner. Garrett Jones took a close pitch. Right handed uh, hitters are hitting 184 against Wright. Lefties, a little bit more than 100 points better. Swing and a miss. He gets Jones. And the Yankees get a run. One run, two hits. One man left. Brett Gardner getting his breath back. So am I.
will hit, what order they'll hit. Manny Machado, the third baseman, will lead off, batting second and DHing. Jimmy Paredes, the center fielder is Adam Jones, he'll hit third. Cleaning up first baseman Chris Davis, it's Nolan Reimold in left field, batting fifth. Batting sixth, playing right field, Travis Snyder. The shortstop, J.J. Hardy, bat seventh. Batting eighth, playing second base, Ryan Flaherty. And Caleb Joseph will catch, and he's going to bat ninth. And that lineup will be facing the right-hander, Adam Warren, born at New Bern, North Carolina. And these are his numbers on the year. They're pretty good. 11 starts, he's 4-4, four and 3.64 four, ERA. You can see less than a hit per inning. An opponent's hitting just 234 against Adam Warren. Let's check out the pitcher's scouting report. Brought to you by your Tri Honda dealers. How about this? 7 11. That's a very convenient thing. Yeah, we all know that. But he's made 11 starts. The Yankees have won seven of those 11 starts that Adam Warren has made this year. And he's got five consecutive quality starts going. And in those quality starts, he's given up six home runs. Only one of those home runs has not been a solo shot. So when he gives them up, Usually there's nobody on base. So Adam Warren trying to get the Yankees in the win column this afternoon here at Camden Yards. Well, here comes Manny Machado. The Orioles moved over 500 with their victory last night. They're 31 and 30. Machado has a seven game hitting streak going. And he has his average up to 285. Machado really is one of the best young players in yeah. baseball, but he's been derailed by knee injuries in each of the last two years. Slowed him down just a bit, but outstanding defensively and a very good bat. All right away, we're going with the Jeep hitter scouting report, and Manny has been streaking, as Michael said. He's got a seven game hitting streak. He's also hitting 37 of his last 48 games after a slow start, and he's over 300 in those games. Hitting 316. And the last one, the Yankees have been, haven't been able to stop him. He's hit 389 against the Yankees. He's 5 for 9 in this series. There's a base hit and an eight game hitting streak for Machado. Let's check out the way the defense is set up for the Yankees, and it's presented by Geico. Gardner, Williams, and Jones in the outfield, left to right. Headley, Gregorius, Drew, and Teixeira third to first. Murphy's behind the plate. Warren's on the mound. You see Williams in center field, Kenny, and I, I talked to, to Joe Girardi about this today. I said, do you worry about him getting hurt? You know, he's just all out out there. He goes, no. His job is to catch the ball. He said, I think that as he learns the ballparks, he'll know exactly how far he could go in certain ways. He said, but I want him to go and get the ball. That's, that's what he's out there for. And maybe learn the hitters a little bit better, yep. too. Swing and a miss. You notice the breaking ball right away to Jimmy Paredes. And the thing about Paredes, they have found out around the league this guy can hit a fastball. He too has hit the Yankees well this year, 10 for 21. But lately, the other team's been mixing in a few bit more breaking balls, and uh, he's not quite as hot as he was when he first came up to the O's. But still, I mean, the Yankees haven't really solved it. Paredes will swing the bat. He's only walked eight times in 182 at bats, so he's up there hacking. Well, let's uh, see some of Williams' acrobatic catches. This is one of them from last night. Yeah, this is what you're talking about. And uh, crashed into the wall. I was watching this on TV, and originally I thought. I don't know how he's going to survive this one, but he stayed in the ball game. He almost made this catch. That would have been another circus type catch. Just eluded his glove. He crashes into the wall. Years ago, walls were not padded in Major League Baseball. Now they are. When outfielders got to be more expensive, they started to pad the walls. Well, for you younger viewers, I mean, just go and Google a guy named Pete Reeser of the Brooklyn Dodgers. He was going to be a superstar, but he kept losing fights with walls. Mm -hmm. He would run head first into a wall and be out. Really, really derailed his career. I think he fractured his skull one time, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. Scary stuff. And that was one of the reasons they did start to pad the walls. He's just so fast, Williams, and he has a reputation as a great outfielder. But we've seen him, you know, just 
run with abandon out there. You know, one thing when you're in center field, you got to feel you can catch anything. If it stays in the park, you should be able to catch it. Line foul. Buck Showalter's team is rolling right now. They won six straight. They're hitting. Their pitching's been good. The bullpen has come through. And he got another pitcher back today. Brian Mattis comes back from suspension. Mattis had been suspended for foreign substances. Rosin and sunscreen. I, I guess I've I've been half uh, guilty of that. I've had sunscreen on me. <laughs> you know, I was going to say one out of two ain't bad. <laughs> Machado has a career high eight stolen bases this year. Not going. Gets him on the off speed pitch. One away. And yeah, pitcher staying away from the breaking uh, fastball more against Paredes. And uh, this is a very good changeup. Uh, make that a curveball. Sorry. Curveball and Paredes will chase it in the dirt and he is struck out. Now it's interesting about Mattis. He had an eight game suspension. Uh -huh. And Will Smith of the Brewers did the same thing and had a six game suspension. And people in the Orioles don't understand why, except that Smith is one of those guys get gets used almost every day as that sort of pitcher. And that they gave him fewer days because he was going to miss more. Uh, well, you know what? But Mattis is a reliever. He's like an everyday player too. Yeah. The Orioles are very upset about it. Mattis particularly. You know why? Because it's two more days of not getting paid. Yeah. And let's take a look. This is when uh, the incident happened. The incident. Yeah. Okay. That's. This is in Miami. That's their new man manager Jennings, who the Yankees will be seeing. And uh, man is ejected from the game. It is. Uh, Michael said eight game suspension. The Orioles had to play one man short in the bullpen for eight games. Yep. They weren't allowed to call somebody up. So for all of you out there are thinking of using sunscreen, do not put rosin. Don't mix. That's right. Now I'm thinking, can he help me through this? The two days in Miami, if I sit by the pool, yeah. should I put rosin on my body or sunscreen? Well, it depends on what kind of grip you want to have. <laughs> <laughs> it's really a nice thought either way. <laughs> Machado leads off first one man out, bottom of the first inning, just underway here in Baltimore. Right in on the hand. Sounds like a broken bat. And it is. Bat boy right on top of it. Hands another one to Adam Jones, who just happens to be the best day game hitter in the major leagues. 432 in day games. That means he's getting his rest. That, that means not only that, he's got a good alarm clock, too. He's never late for a day game. Warren working very slowly in this bottom of the first, and Oriole batters keep stepping out as well. Machado was taken off once uh, during this trip to first base. The ball was fouled off. He you know, said career high eight stolen bases, so I guess his knee's feeling well. Eight out of nine. There he goes. And a ground ball through the vacated hole on the right side. Hit and run single. Machado will go to third. Drew was covering on the stolen base. Otherwise, it's an inning ending double play. Well, Adam Jones in protection mode. He's got a couple of strikes. And you can see, like the Red Sea parting, it opens up over there. And he gets the base hit. 
Not his A swing, but it works out well. You can see Drew drawn out of position. He had to cover with Manny Machado on the move. And now the Orioles are threatening here in the bottom of the first. Now, Kenny, in all likelihood, that was not called. That was happenstance. Yeah, he hit the ball exactly. on the right side, and, and uh, Drew was covering. Yeah, because he had two strikes, right. he, he's going to put the ball in play if it was close. He was fooled. And he got a base hit out of it. They always say you move runners, good things could happen. Here is Chris Davis. Runners on the corners. Blocked by John Ryan Murphy. Yankees have the most wild pitches of any team in baseball. You know, that might tell you that's indication of the pitcher stuff. I mean, it's just hard to handle when it's not on target. And uh, you, when you have pitchers like Batances, the Yankees are a strikeout staff. That means a lot of guys throw hard. Andrew Miller, nasty sliders in the dirt. Two and zero on Davis. Yeah, one of the reasons why Baltimore's kind of taken off. Davis is kind of getting back on a hot streak here. He had a season high four RBIs in the game on Friday. He's got four hits in this series. You know he can be really hot at times and very dangerous, but then other times he can be Antarctic cold. I wouldn't be just. I wouldn't just lay one in here right now. Yeah, he, he's, he's a green light sort of hitter. Yeah, he's on a hot streak too. He, he's making more contact. You know, sometimes it's not. Uh, you know how you play teams. It's when you play them. And the Orioles are scoring a lot of runs lately, and Davis is a big reason. Walked him on four pitches to load the bases and bring up Nolan Rymo. Well, this series, the Orioles have scored their runs 20 runs in the first two games, hitting 392 against the Yankees. And the runners in scoring position 419. Wow, that's a big number. Yankees looking for the double play. And the pitch to Rymold is a strike. center field that's a base hit two runs will score it's a two run single for Rymel Davis moves to second and the O's lead the Yankees two to one very confident team right now Nolan Rymel trying to uh, maintain his starting role as an outfielder with his Orioles since being uh, brought back up to the major leagues Delivers a two run single here. This is his fourth hit of the series. And he drives in two runs, and Baltimore takes the lead. And a quick trip to the mound by Larry Rothschild. Yankees are in their third game of 20 straight games without a day off, and they can't afford to have a real short starting outing here. The bullpen right now is in transition and not pitching as well as you would wanted to pitch yesterday. Things didn't look great Friday as well as they essentially released Esmeal Rogers and sent down Lindgren. Snyder. High pop up shallow left center. Gardner makes the call and the catch for the second out. You know one thing that's been uh, kind of disconcerting for the Yankees and uh, they haven't looked particularly good on defense in this series. They, they've made uh, you know, several plays should have been made. Some plays uh, were errors altogether. And plus, with the the Orioles swing the bat so well, I mean, at certain times you don't want to be playing certain teams. You asked the Red Sox if they wanted to play the Orioles or the Blue Jays, who have kind of beat them up as well. Ask the Angels how it felt to go in the Yankee Stadium, get swept by the Yankees. You know that. Sometimes you run into teams at the wrong time. Yeah. 
Popped up on the left side. Headley runs out of room on the roof of the Yankee dugout. J.J. Hardy's missed some time this year. We told you about his shoulder injury on the Friday night. And he, too, is just starting to warm up now. He didn't get much in the way of rehab in the minor leagues. I think he played just two games in the minors in a rehab. And the Orioles wanted him back more for his glove and let his bat catch up. And he's starting to catch up with the bat. Very solid defender. Has won three consecutive gold gloves. Davis at second, Reimold at first. Well, Warren, not too sharp. 26 pitches here in the first inning as Murphy goes out and talks with him. Just 13 strikes. Yeah, it's, it's not the way Adam Warren usually pitches. Two. So the runners will go three, two, and two outs here in the first. Two runs in for the O's. They lead two to one. And the payoff. Foul back. Over the years, we've known Hardy to be a very good high fastball hitter. And that's it, kind of unusual because he holds his hand so low, but he's able to get the bat back up and on everything that's up in the top of the zone. That means he hits with sort of like a, a chopping action to his swing. Fly ball, center field, drifting back, Mason Williams. He's there. And makes the play. But the Orioles score two runs on three hits. They leave two. We go to the second. It's 2 1 0s. Medicine. Ivan Nova made his second rehab start. This one was at Scranton Wilkesbury against Rochester, AAA affiliate of the Twins. He went six innings, five hits, a run, walked one, struck out three, threw 73 pitches. Now he's on the 60 day DL, rehabbing from Tommy John surgery. Joe Girardi said the report they got, everything looked good. Velocity was good. Breaking ball was not as sharp as they wanted to be. But the next time we see him, Kenny, could be here with the Yankees. And there would have to be a corresponding move in the rotation because 
Nova does not work out of the bullpen. At least not anymore. And we know that Adam Wallen has worked out of the bullpen and been exceptional at it. Mm -hmm. And right now it's an area of need for the Yanks. We'll see what they do. Here's Stephen Drew. And Wright deals a strike. Fly ball, shallow right center is going to dunk in for a base hit. Well, you heard the sound off the bat, and it sounded like he might have broken his bat, but certainly did not get good wood on it. If it did, if he did, Stephen Drew would have been out. The ball would have carried out to Adam Jones in center. Instead, it gets in on his hands. He's strong enough to fight it off and drop it over second base and in the right center for a hit. So that's the Yankees' third hit. Here's D.D. Gregorius. Kind of a half bunt, half push. But a foul ball nonetheless. D.D.'s hitting 229 now. In his last 27 uh, games, Kenny, he's hitting 269. He's pushing that average up. He's trying to push it up a little more. He had Manny Machado back or just beyond the bag at third. As good as Manny is, if that was gotten down a good set, I think Gregorius would have beaten it out. So the count is 0-2. Drew leads off first, held there by Davis. One and two. Now early this year, I was uh, riding around. I was listening to an Oriole radio broadcast, and they were talking about Mike Wright. And they're saying he's a big Harry Potter fan. Really? Yeah, and he's read all seven of the books. And what he likes to do is before the game, he comes out of the clubhouse on the road or at home. He'll sit in the stands very early during the day, and he'll just read one of those novels that he's read before. So he rereads them. Yeah, and he relaxes them, and he doesn't like being in the clubhouse before the game. I didn't see him out here today. It was 200 degrees, so I, I can understand that. But that's what he does before games to relax. Have you read those books? No. I have not either. No. But uh, most of the world has. Yeah, they have. They make movies out of them too, didn't they? They made <laughs> a movie out of everyone. Yeah. Off of right. And a base hit for Gregorius. Yeah, this ball refused to be caught. Almost like wizardry. <laughs> <laughs> I see where you went there. Thank you. Foul <laughs> ball off of Wright's foot. Man with Chano can't get it. All hands are going to be saved. Breaking ball. Look like it hit him on both feet. And we're going to take a look this, at this one on Yesmo, brought to you by your Mercedes-Benz Tri-State dealer. Manny, if Manny Machado can't get it, nobody's going to get it. Now, will the Yankees bunt here? You have the uh, the rookie on deck. Probably too early. Orioles thinking, so they're in on yeah. the grass for John Ryan Murphy. And I've seen Murphy bunt. He's, he's quite capable. Let's see how they play it here. No. A lot has to do with the ballpark you're playing in. This is a hitter friendly park. Hey, you move ahead by one run, it doesn't really mean yeah, that much. Yeah, especially the way Baltimore is swinging the bats. It's like here in Fenway Park. You're not really playing for one.
0-2 on Murphy. Just a day off for Brian McCann, day game after night game. Obviously available as a pinch hitter. See the numbers on last year's backup catcher, Kenny? Francisco Cervelli? No, I haven't. I think he's hitting 325 and since May has the highest batting average in the National League. He's now the catcher for the Pirates. Finally getting his chance well, to be an everyday player. You know, I was going to say, he's not a backup anymore. The 0 2. John Ryan's hanging in there, although he's deep in the hole. No balls and two strikes. He's fouled off some tough pitches to keep this at bat going. And if nothing else, he wants to at least advance Drew over the third base. Little uh, sunscreen there for Brendan Ryan. Yeah, but you notice there's no rosin near him. No. no. Popped up. Right side. And no one can get there. Not enough air time. That's what I always say. <laughs> <laughs> Yankees runners on first and second. Nobody out here in the second inning. It's two one O's. Yeah, I'm trying to add this up now. How long's your talk show? Four, four. hours. Four yeah. hours. Mm -hmm. the ball came can be three. Today yeah, it looks like four. Yeah. All right. Well, but my <laughs> My point is you're on the air a third of a day during the week. Then you got the encore and the best of. Yeah. So sprinkling on the center stage. Still not enough. We're talking half a day. <laughs> and then I talk to myself when I'm alone. <laughs> and the O2 just missed outside. Good out. This didn't miss by much. And you see Joseph's glove. He has to reach just enough off the corner. Andy Fletcher. Don't play the umpire with the call. Chop up the middle. And a great stab there by the second baseman Flaherty. But everybody's safe. He saved the run. Drew would have scored. But a great save. But not quick enough to get Gregorius. Bases loaded, nobody out. And a heck of a at bat by John Ryan Murphy. Just to hang in there, almost snuck one through the middle for the base hit. Good hustle by Gregorius to get down to second ahead of the toss. And the bases are loaded with nobody out. Three consecutive singles for the Yankees here in the second inning. Great stop by Flaherty. The flip not in time to Hardy. Nice laying out. But as Michael said, he saved a run. There's another look at it. Now he has to recover enough to make an accurate throw, but Gregory has too much speed. And this, for Mason Williams, this is a major league first. He's going to be up there with the bases loaded. Mason's only hit a home run. This is being called up Friday. Ground ball to first. They're going to come home. And they get the force. And the bases are loaded now with one out. Good play by Chris Davis at first. He's playing just beyond the bag, and he's coming with one thing on his mind throwing the ball home. He charged it, gets a force at the plate on Drew, and now there's one out.
Here's Brett Gardner had an infield single towards second. That was in the first and scored the Yankee run. Well, in the first inning of the first game here, Yankees had the bases loaded, nobody out, and they didn't score. Trying to avoid that this inning with Gardner at the plate. Speed at the corners for the Yankees and at the plate. 1 0. Forty second pitch for right. Goes off speed, misses outside two and oh. And Gardner with the bases loaded, good numbers in his career, three forty three, two grannies. And he's got a good hitters count here, two balls and no strikes. He he can pick and choose if he sees something he really likes. He can lean on it. If right makes a good pitch, he can let it go. He challenged them. A little one on one there. And this time, Gardner comes up a little empty. That ball is elevated just enough to get over his back. The 2 1. Dials it up to 96, two and two. And if you're a pitcher, this is where you have to reach back for a little extra. Two one O's. We're at the top of the second. Foul back here into the seats. Well, just looking in the stands right now, people are really fanning themselves. It is very hot. 45 pitches for right, so you can imagine how how hot he is. Right now, the sun is burned through the overcast sky, and people are baking. It is hot. Two balls, two strikes, one out, bases loaded. The 2-2. Two, two. Three and two. Joe Espada, the third base coach, reminding everybody there's just one out. Watch the line drive. Make sure it gets through. Away. Well, the Yankees a jump rights pitch count up. He's up to 47, and he's not through the second inning yet. Foul back here again. And that was the 25th pitch of the end. Gregorius is at third, J.R. Murphy at second, and Mason Williams at first. This will be the ninth pitch of the at bat. In the center field, Jones right there makes a catch. Tagging is Gregorius. Here's the throw. He's in there. A sack fly for Gardner. Moving to third is Murphy, and the Yankees have tied the score at two. Oh, just deep enough. Adam Jones has a strong throwing arm. Gregorius tags up, has decent speed, and is able to score. Jones has five outfield assists. We mentioned on Friday the Orioles as a team have 20. 
outfield assist that leads the major leagues. Gregoria slides in. Joseph late with the tag. In fact, there was no tag. And the Yankees have tied this ball game up at two. Here he comes, right into your living room. All right, get the vacuum cleaner. A little dirty. Now, Dave Wallace, the pitching coach, comes out and talks with Wright. So we've seen both pitching coaches early. It's a 2 2 game. So runners on the corners now with two outs and Chase Headley coming up. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the New York Yankees and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the aforementioned New York Yankees. I think it's one of those days where pitching coaches go out to talk to the pitchers, not only to allow the bullpen to warm up, that's Tyler Wilson. Who was called up today? He's uh, warming up, but just give him a little bit of a breather. One note on that last fly ball: heads-up play by John Ryan Murphy to tag up and move over to third, where he could score on a wild pitch. Possibly score on a wild pitch. Pitch outside to Headley. Deuces are wild here at Fenway. Two-two, second inning. Two outs. I said Fenway. I, it's really hot. At Camden. <laughs> did you say Fenway? Yeah, I did. I didn't even notice it. <laughs> Another two, two and oh. And once again, the same thing applies to uh, Chase Hedden. What do you say? He has 99 homers? 99. In yep. 99. Get a good pitch to hit. Right comes in with a changeup. Good pitch by the pitcher. You let it go. No sense swinging at it. Hit a little roll it back to the mound. This will be the 30th pitch of the inning for the rookie. Now, Kenny, yeah. we have two is wild here at Camden Yards. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, second inning, 2 2 game. Down on strike, so bases loaded, nobody out. The Yankees manage one. They leave two to go to the bottom of the second, two two. Collectibles of the season. It's Thurman Munson Bobblehead Night. It's the second in the 2015 Collectible Series presented by AT&T for the first 18,000 guests in attendance. For tickets, log on to Yankees.com. 
Visit the Yankee Stadium ticket window, Yankees Clubhouse Shops, or call Ticketmaster at 877-469-9849. We go to the bottom of the second inning. 2-2 game. It'll be 8-9-1 and one in the O's order. Ryan Flaherty will start it off. Fly ball to Williams. One pitch, one out. One good thing about the Yankees extended top of the second inning. Adam Warren had a long first inning through 29 first inning pitches. And by the fact that the Yankees put so many men on base and had uh, Mike Wright out there for so long, he gave Adam Warren a chance to catch his breath a bit and come back to this inning with the score tied at 2 2. Here's Caleb Joseph. We mentioned Weeders played last night. Joseph played on Friday, and that's the way they're going to do it. Because Weeders' arm not strong enough to play every day. And you know, Show Walter was asked if that was tough to do. He said, No, not having him at all would be tough. <laughs> he said, So if I could have him every other day, have him every other day. Well, one thing about Joseph, the Yankees haven't been able to solve this guy. He's hitting 560 against the Yankees this year. 25 at bats, 14 hits. And a couple of home runs. Uh, Caleb Joseph. Tough hitter. Now, brother Corbin. Yeah. Was uh, in the Yankee system. Mm -hmm. Today, he was actually signed by the Orioles. So, he'll be in their minor league system. Hey, Joseph did a good enough job last year without readers. They made the American League Championship Series and won the American League East. And that's true. And Joseph had been primarily a, a double-A catcher for a number of years. There's Matt Wieters, all-star catcher for the Orioles. Fly ball, left center. Gardner makes the play. You know, it's interesting, Kenny. They're being so careful with Wieters. Because it's the right thing to do. And they're being careful with leaders, probably for another team. Because he's a free agent at the end of the year. And the way the Orioles work, they're not going to sign him to a long term big money contract. So they're keeping it healthy where he can play almost every day for somebody next year. Yeah, well, he's coming back from Tommy John surgery, usually an injury re reserved for pitchers, but it does happen to position players. And uh, three days from now, it'll be uh, exactly a year since he had the Tommy John surgery. And he said he's not 100%, but he was told that when you have Tommy John surgery, it takes two years before you feel the same mm -hmm. as you did before you got hurt. Now, people come back way before two years, but to feel like nothing happened mm -hmm. two years. One and one on Machado. Machado singled in the first and scored a run. Talked about Manny's slow start, and not only uh, was at the plate, it was in the field. He'd made quite a few errors early in the year, and they were kind of concerned, but he has shored up his whole game since the beginning of the season. Nice bounce back inning for Warren as he retires the Orioles in order. Coming up for the Yankees, Alex Rodriguez. He's leading off the third. He's five hits away from 3,000. But who's counting? We are. He's five hits away.
the hybrid vehicle of the Yankees. The question, what do you think of the possibility of A-Rod making the All-Star team this year? And one of the responses from Luke Becker, A-Rod has been the top DH this year, and with his impressive numbers, he deserves a spot on the All-Star team. Follow Yes Network and tweet us your responses using hashtag Yankees Camry Hybrid to keep the conversation going. A lot of that has to do with the uh, DH voting, and I'm not sure who's leading right now. It was Nelson Cruz. Yeah, I think Nelson Cruz is having a better year than Alex. That's right. Morales, I mean, every, what? Every Kansas City player is leading except for one outfield position. That's Mike Trout. Audi A3 scoreboard. It's 2 2. I think that the voting had Ned Yost playing second base, too. <laughs> High fly ball, center field. Adam Jones is there. Well, Ned Yost is going to be there. No he's matter, managing, yeah, yeah, he's managing the team. Play a manager. A Rod, by the way, A Rod just missed that one, folks. He just did, didn't get on top of it. Got it out to the warning track and straightaway center. Looked like a high fastball. He didn't quite get on top of it. It just underneath it to pop it up. And you can see his reaction. He knew he got good wood on it, but didn't drive it. To share grounds one foul. To share an RBI double in the first inning. That gives him 47 ribbies on the season. Now his average is not where he wants it to be. Let go. And quickly out of the dugout, Joe Jordy and Steve Donahue. And I think that got him in the upper back. He just ducked enough. I was going to say, Kenny, he has to be considered for the All Star team as well. Yeah, not only that, and, and he along with A Rod have to be considered for comeback players of the year. Like, this, this is dangerous, folks. Just to look like on the shoulder blade. Yeah, it's a little high, and the hitters have long memories. Remember that. I know Wright's a rookie. I think back to the time when the Ivan Nova dusted Jose Bautista in Toronto. Remember that? Yep. Nova was a rookie. Bautista didn't like it. Garrett Jones fouls away. Well, we'll see if Adam Warren has a long memory. <laughs> Ooh. He's saying there's a revenge factor here somewhere. Well, if the Yankees think that he did it on purpose. Uh -huh. It's hard to read intent. Now there was a play yesterday Kenny. We were both watching the game on TV. Where it was a ground ball to Pierce at first. Mm -hmm. And he threw and got the out at third on to share to share kind of rolled into. Machado on the slide. Yeah, that's true too. You never know with the Buck show Walter team if that's something that they filed away. Line drive, base hit to right field. Snyder cuts over, cuts the ball off. Jones makes a big turn, will head back to first, moving to third is to Shara. There's one thing I heard a long time ago from my former teammate Jim Palmer. The guy you hit might be the guy that scores the run and beats you. Garrett Jones has chased Mark to share to third base with this single to right field. So Jim wasn't in the habit of hitting many, and he also wasn't in the habit of losing many. Right. Of course, he had the stuff. He didn't really have to try and intimidate. He just got people out. With Stephen Drew as to share it dancing off of third. There's a strike. Let's take a look at that play yesterday, Kenny. And who knows if this is in their mind? Yeah, this is uh, Steve Pierce throwing over to third base. Mark Deshera was on second, and Pierce forgot about the out at first base. He wanted to get the lead runner, and Deshera was out. And you saw he went in hard to Manny Machado, and the Manny Machado is one of the favorites here in Baltimore. And also, Manny Machado's had problems with his knees. Yeah, he has. So 
You're right about Buck Showalter. He's got a long memory. You're not going to forget anything like that. Buck sees all. I think that's one of the things that's made him a very successful manager over the years. Drew pops it up. Caleb Joseph makes the play. Two outs. As we watch Wright work through these first three innings, the best pitch, and it, it's kind of true to the scouting report, his secondary pitches are still a, a work in progress. He's primarily been getting the Yankees out with his fastball, which he has elevated. He got it up and in on Drew and got the pop up at the right time. Here's D.D. Gregorius. We haven't seen that many breaking balls, a few change ups. Change up. Well, one thing the Yankees have been able to do, and they get those big two out hits. And this is another situation where they've, they've kind of stumbled into one. They had a chance with one out to get a runner home, and now it's uh, down to one more out in the inning. Two and one. The pitch. Fly ball shallow center. Backing up is Hardy. He's there. He makes the play, and that'll do it. No runs to hit, no errors, and Two men left on base. We go to the bottom of the third. Action to the road in the new Sonata. Visit your Hyundai dealer today. And by Bud Light, stay in the game and drink responsibly. Some of the food delights out on Utah Street between the ballpark and the warehouse. Did you know that the warehouse can used to house the Union Army? That was. Uh... They almost tore it down. 
but they decided to uh, use that to frame the ballpark and yeah beautiful ball. It's the longest building east of Mississippi River. That's where the Orioles have their offices. Mm -hmm. A couple of uh, there's a restaurant out there Rick Dempsey's restaurant team store and it frames the ballpark beautifully. Pitch the Paredes is a strike. Rick was up here just a moment ago. Slow roller up the first baseline. It'll be a tough play. And it gets passed to share. It's a base hit for Paredes. Now they're saying that he's out because he ran out of the baseline and on the grass. He did not give Adam Warren an angle, and Buck Showalter's out quickly. It was the home plate umpire, Andy Fletcher, who makes the call. You can see that uh, Teixeira had trouble finding the baseball once it's thrown by Adam Warren. Blocked out by the runner. Now, Schulter might say, well, it didn't hit the runner. How could you say he's running out of the baseline? Well, you know, the 45 foot line, about halfway down the first base, you're supposed to maintain the ability to run it between, in between those two lines. But the thing about it, if you run straight to the bag, you are inside yeah. on the, near the grass. Everybody runs on that grass. Mm -hmm. But Paredes is going to be out. I've always said this, Kenny. The only thing that makes sense is extend the base into foul territory for the runner. And that would kind of throw off the symmetry for. Uh, as you can see, Teixeira had all kinds of problems. Almost hit the first base umpire. Jordan back, Baker. Here's Jones. 0 and 1. You know, if you look at the first base bag, the bag is sits just inside of foul territory. Now, when a runner's running down the line, if we hold this just for a second here, that 45 foot line's over here. To get to the bag, you have to veer back to the left. Or just run by and kick with your left foot. <laughs> you know what? But it's been that way for about 150 years, and they're not going to change it. Seen a lot of changes in baseball. That might be the last thing they ever change. You know what's weird about that, Kenny, is that. It didn't hit the runner. The no. throw was essentially perfect. But Teixeira didn't want to reach in and get his arm torn off. Okay. And so they called it interference. But really, you hardly ever see that call if the ball doesn't hit the runner. Andy Fletcher did not hesitate. So he, he, he I guess he felt that all the way down the line, Paredes was, uh, what do you say, out of line? I guess. Soft ground ball to second. Drew is there. Two outs. Kenny Toronto's won 10 in a row. They're up 6 0 on Boston in the fourth inning. Man. Boston has run into a buzzsaw the last uh, and swept here in Baltimore. About to be swept at home by the uh, Toronto Blue Jays. Yesterday they lost in extra innings. You know, with Boston, what, seven games behind, and you can throw a blanket over the other teams in the division.
You know, there's a good story in the Baltimore Sun today about how this division used to be called the AL Beast, and now it's the AL Least. And Buck Showalter said, I don't think that's true. He said, these teams beat up on each other. He said, I'd like to see another team come in here and, and play differently. You know, my thinking is the teams are starting to play better in this division. You know, you know the Yankees ventured out of the division. They played uh, the Angels, who are second or third in the West, and they swept them at Yankee Stadium. Three one. Three and two. Warren much sharper than he was in the first inning. He's got a pitch count of 52. Two outs into the third. Well, once Davis got the count of three and zero, oh, he had the green light three and zero oh, and fouled it off. Now Warren has fought back to get the count to three and two. Strike three. Davis down looking. Eight in a row retired by Adam Warren. We're going to the fourth inning. It's a 2 2 game. He serves up real-time highlights and pitch tracking info on your out-of-market fantasy players, live or on demand on over 400 devices. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Get MLB.tv today. Now we go to the fourth inning. John Ryan Murphy will lead it off on the Lincoln scoreboard. It's a 2-2 game. I was looking at that uh, Toronto and Boston score six nothing in the fourth inning in favor of the Blue Jays. Uh, starting for Boston today was uh, Eduardo Rodriguez. Who had not been touched. Yeah, much. he's uh, got off to a great start in his career, but uh, facing the Blue Jays today, a red hot team, he's been roughed up. And that was the pitcher that the Orioles sent to the Red Sox to get Andrew Miller, yeah. and they knew they were giving up a good pitcher, but they felt that Andrew Miller could be the final piece for them. Remember Dallas Green, who managed the Yankees for a short time, once told me, he said, if you have a chance to win, he said, you, you have to deal the best prospect in your system. If you have a piece that you think is going to come back and give you the chance to win, he said, it's so hard to win. You know what? And it's even harder now because there's more layers to the playoff. Yep. I remember one such trade, Kenny. I'm sure you do as well. The Tigers. 
traded John Smoltz for Doyle Alexander. Ground ball at third. Bobbled by Machado. Regains the handle. One away. And I think Doyle Alexander went 11 and 0 for that and got them into the puzzle, but they didn't win. Uh -huh. And we know what happened with John Smoltz. I think he became a broadcaster. <laughs> Here's Manning, Machado, great range at third, even stronger arm. There's the bobble Michael was talking about. But he regains his touch. Gun across the diamond for the out. Here's Mason Williams. Pitch to the rookie is outside. Yeah, Machado's got nine errors, but virtually all of them came within the first month and a half of the season. Now, Maddie didn't just win the gold glove last year. He won the plutonium glove, which is even better. Plutonium? Yeah, it's the highest medal, I guess. <laughs> Platinum? Platinum. Yeah, plutonium. I think the kryptonite glove. Yeah. No, that's for the worst fielder in the world. <laughs> but they do actually award a platinum glove mm -hmm. to the best fielder all around. In the game. Williams takes a strike three and one. He's the only player with that platinum. Logo there the Rawlings logo. Three one. Grounded to short Hardy. That's the hustling Williams. The Orioles, second out. the Orioles are a pretty strong defensive club. I mentioned the other day they had taken over the uh, the league lead in fewest errors. It had been Tampa Bay, but uh, with Hardy returning at short, Machado at third, Weeders catching, and Jones in center field, they're they're pretty solid defensively. Here's Gardner, one for one with a sack fly and a run scored. Filling a lot of columns in that box score and takes a first pitch strike. <laughs> oh and two. Both pitchers have settled down just a bit. Warren more so than Wright, who has flirted with trouble the last couple of innings, but trying to get through this one, two, three. He's retired four in a row. Eighty-two pitches, two outs into the fourth. So he's not going to be shaking hands coming off the mound. <laughs> Still throwing hard. Two and two. Big, strong guy. Six foot six. Staring down, standing on top of a hill. And I'm thinking back to the days when I first joined the Orioles and the mid 70s. And I looked around the infield and had Bobby Gritch, Mark Belanger, and Brooks Robinson, all three gold glove winners. And I looked over to my right, it was Paul Blair. And all these guys, multiple gold glove winners. And it's kind of a tradition here because Earl Weaver liked solid pitching, good defense, and guys who got on base and hit home runs. But he felt that was a winning combination. He had five teams in 100 games. Pretty good combo. Yeah. Here's the payoff. Up the middle. Hardy to first. And the Yankees go down in order one, two, three. Now I don't like ketchup, but when they spell out words, you know, I've got to appreciate it. Orioles and ketchup.
blogger Giancarlo Stanton. He's got a son here and the Marlins. Join yes for pregame coverage starting at 6.30 after the game on Picks 11. Come back for Yankees Extra Innings. Then on Tuesday night, you catch full coverage starting at 6 right here on yes. And we'll take a look at the pitching matchup. Brought to you by Verizon Files, the fastest, most reliable internet. And it's Masahiro Tanaka, who's been pitching very well since coming out the DL against Tom Kohler. Again, our coverage, 6.30 on Yes, game time 7 on Picks 11. So Masahiro taking batting practice on Friday night here, getting ready for this uh, interleague series where he's going to have to hit. They get scoreboard, 2-2, bottom of the fourth. That poses an interesting problem for Joe Girardi because Alex Rodriguez is probably being reduced to the role of a pinch hitter. Now he said today before the game, he said, right now that's the way I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. He said, but everything is subject to change. It's actually a four-game series. Yeah, you're right. Two games in Miami, and then they come right back and play two games in New York. That's a tough turnaround because... Tuesday the night game in Miami, so they'll get into New York very late or early on Wednesday. So the count full on Reimold. Reimold with a two-run single in the first inning. This will be the 60th pitch for Warren. All right, Kenny, review the swing. Here's Tanaka on Friday. Well, first, yeah, oh, what's what your boy play? Faking the bunt, then swinging the bat. It's going to get a little tricky when he's up there. Nice action. He's held the bat before. And he's broken some. <laughs> oh, bad play by a guy in the stands. Had it lined up right off his hands and then drops into the lower deck. Reimold with a leadoff walk. Is this what you're talking about, Michael? Second deck. Oh. oh. Longtime PA announcer Rex Barney uh -huh. used to say, "Give that man a cop." He wouldn't have said it about that guy, but no. if he made a catch in the stands, he'd go on the the system and then give that man a contract. Here's Travis Snyder. Murphy wants to talk with Warren. Trying to find a way to get uh, Snyder to roll one over, maybe a ground ball to Drew and get two. But when you're falling behind two balls and no strikes, you know, sometimes you have to catch too much of the plate. A little encouragement from John Ryan Murphy to Adam Warren in this 2 2 ball game. Hi, Papa. Headley makes the play for the first out. And yeah, maybe he went out there and said, maybe you can get him to pop up the headley. Well, he got it done. And now a double play to get him out of the inning. Well, here's J.J. Hardy. Fly ball to center in the first. Hey. 
Base hit through the left side. As I said, J.J. Hardy's starting to heat up a bit. His average is barely over 200, but he was way down there and only had a couple of games of rehab coming back from a uh, shoulder injury. That pitches up. He's a good high fastball hitter, and he drills it through the hole for a base hit. Here's Ryan Flaherty. Fly ball to center in the second. Owen one. Flaherty, a very versatile player. Not like our John Flaherty, basically played first uh, catcher, and that was it. Have you ever asked Flash if you've ever played another position? I think he played first okay. a couple of games. Okay. I stand corrected. But this Flaherty, Ryan Flaherty, can play first, second, third, and short, maybe even the outfield a little bit. But John Flaherty is a very versatile broadcaster. He can do play by play, yeah, he, he can, can do color, uh -huh. he can do studio work. Yeah. yeah. Toronto now up eight nothing over Boston, top of the fifth inning. Still looking for that ground ball at one of the infielders. This will be pitch number seventy, and he strikes out Flaherty for the second out. Third strikeout for Adam Warren. Nice slider down and in right over the top. Ryan Flaherty strikes out with two men on. Here's Caleb Joseph. Joseph at 247 has the fourth highest batting average amongst American League catchers. Bottom one. Nice changeup. And that's the thing about Adam Warren. He's got a variety of pitches that uh, usually relievers have two. You know, fastball, slider. But he's got fastball slider, change up in a curve. That's the repertoire of the starters. And he brings it to the table as a reliever or as a starting pitcher. Fourth round, 2009, out of the University of North Carolina. Groomed as a starting pitcher. Fly ball in the right center, and it can't be caught by Garrett Jones. One run scores. They are going to hold Hardy at third. It's an RBI double for Joseph, and it's 3 2 O's. Another ball that wasn't particularly well hit. It was just well placed off the bat of Caleb Joseph. And it's going to be a very raw shot out to the man. So he didn't hit it all that well, and it had a little flair to it and drop in. Mason Williams didn't have a chance. And Garrett Jones, all he could do is knock it down. And Baltimore will take the lead as the leadoff walk comes in to score. Caleb Joseph now 15 for 27 against the Yankees this season. As Reimold scores. 
Well, the right field play we've seen from the Yankees this year has not made anybody forget Paul O'Neill. They have not had sparkling play in the outfield in that specific position. That's a tough play there for Jones, but you'd say a speedy outfielder probably has a better chance of making that play. Now, Kenny and I mentioned this on the, uh, the pregame show. The one thing you didn't have to worry about concerning this Yankee team coming out of spring training was they were going to be great defensively. They had plus defenders at every position except right. It has not worked out. Machado pops one up to Shara, makes the play, and that will do it. Now the O's take the lead. One run, two hits, and two men left on base. We go to the fifth. Three two O's. Orioles have the lead, three to two on the Bigelow scoreboard, three five and zero, leading two six and zero. You wonder what's going to happen in Boston, Kenny. That's such high hope for that team. Big signings with Sandoval and Hanley Ramirez, but it has not panned out. David Ortiz has had a terrible first two and a half months, and the team's not scoring and not pitching. Yeah, you're you're right. I'm sure they hope for a lot more rather than being seven games behind them. Trailing the remainder of the division at this point in the season. They're getting spanked once again today. Now it's 10 to nothing. Wow. I mean, when your owner comes out and says, you know, it's hard to watch the games on TV, that's not a ringing endorsement. Chase Headley 0 for 2, leads off the fifth, the 1 0 count. 2 0. Foul back here, right under our booth. Now we're talking about the American League East, Kenny, and, and the story in the Baltimore Sun. Now you have to consider that a lot of days an AL East team will play an AL East team. Mm -hmm. But it took until June 5th to have all five clubs win on the same day. In fact, in all of 2015, it's happened just twice. So is it parity or is it a weak division? 
but to this point, nobody's really played their way out of it or separated themselves from the pack. Yeah, it's kind of misleading because in April, everybody's play playing each other. Each other. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But that's the way the schedule started out. So Headley walks. Well, coming into the weekend, the Blue Jays led the American League in runs scored. The Yankees were second. The Orioles were tenth. The Red Sox 12th and the Rays 13th. That's out of 15 teams. Mm -hmm. But the Rays had the best ERA in the league at 3.33. And the Yankees and the O's were 6th and 8th respectively. So it's not surprising that the Rays have been doing it with pitching. That's the type of club they are. And Kenny, the Blue Jays were 14th and the Red Sox were last in the ERA. And that's after firing a pitching coach. Here's A Rod. A Rod's 0 for 2 today. He's 11 for 40 with four home runs against rookie pitchers this season. A fly ball, right? And he just missed one on a fly ball to center in the third. Brian Mattis off the suspended list. He's up. And the uh, Baltimore fans here as Alex Rodriguez moved off the plate. Now that ball was kind of moving up and in. Alex taking no chances. After a walk to Chase Headley to get things started, Mike Wright might be giving A Rod just say, Here, take your best shot. I'm going to give you my best fastball. Aim for the middle of the plate, hope for the best. Let's see if Alex can catch up to him. Challenge him with the fastball. And he did. Alex trying to unload the wagon here, and he's a little bit late. Outfielders are deep and bunched towards the gaps. And Arod walks, so two walks to open up the fifth, and that brings up to Shera. Who has doubled in a run in the first to left and then was hit by a pitch. Now there's a history between A Rod and Buck. A Rod was a member of Buck's Texas Ranger team. And Buck tells the story that first couple of games he's managing with the Texas Rangers, he sees that the catcher keeps looking at shortstop. And, and Buck said to the catcher, well, What are you doing? He goes, no, nothing. He goes, no, what are you doing? He goes, well, Alex always calls the pitches. Alex was calling every pitch from shortstop. And Buck said, well, not anymore. He's not. And Cal Ripken Jr. used to do this yeah. in Baltimore, too. That's where Alex got it from. This could be Teixeira's revenge moment. Remember, he was hit by a pitch last time up. Hitters have long memories. This, this is a chance for him to get right back at Mike Wright. And he uses aggressiveness against him by going off speed. And that one gets away from Joseph as the runners move up. He went back to the off speed, Michael. But uh, remember, we were talking about the fact that his, sec his secondary pitches are not nearly as good as his fastball. 
He held on to a change up too long. Gets by Caleb Joseph. And the Yankees have the tying run at third with nobody on to go ahead and run at second with nobody on. Infield is back. Two and one. Now I've got three lefties in a row coming up. And Mattis is ready, so this could be the final batter for Mike Wright. And because the share is a switch hitter, it wouldn't make any difference to bring Mattis in. But he's gone with three straight off speed pitches to the sheriff. There is a base open. Missed outside, three and one. Three two on to Sheriff. A ground ball ties the game to shortstop or second. They might come home if it's hit sharply to the corners. Well, you saw him come in 3 1 with a fastball, but I don't think that is a given on 3 and 2 here. You got fastball in your mind, but you remember the other pitches. You, you've got to make the adjustment. All the, look fastball, but adjust to the other pitches. And he walked him on an off speed pitch. Yeah. Three straight walks by Wright. And that's wrong because Buck Showalter is going to take him out of the game. So Showalter makes the Verizon call to the bullpen. The left hander Brian Mattis will come on to face Garrett Jones or a pinch hitter. It's 3 2 Orioles. Fox Sports won for the first time as the greatest golfers in the world converge on the Pacific Northwest for a chance to stamp their names in the history books. Fox's exclusive coverage of the 115th U.S. Open Championship live from Chambers Bay Golf Course begins this Thursday on Fox Sports 1, Fox, and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Well, the Yankees are going to stay with Garrett Jones against the left-hander, Brian Mattis. Mattis on in relief of the rookie Mike Wright. We told you earlier, Mattis just off the suspended list for foreign substance on his arm. He served an eight-game suspension. That's what he did before the suspension. A little bit too many walks to their liking. And Wright, a spectator.
Garrett Jones doesn't hit, get the hit uh, that often against left handed pitching. But he's in there with a chance to tie the ball game here and maybe even more. Mattis helping him out with a 2 0 count. Once again, look right down the middle here. Two and one. Headley at third, A Rod at second, to Sheriff's at first. Yankees down 3 2, we're in the fifth. Three and one to Garrett Jones. No place to put him. Well, Mattis has done everything but place it on a tee here. Falling behind 2 and 0, oh, now 3 and 1. Tie the game. A bases loaded walk. Headley scores. It's 3 3. Well, through that hole at bat. Garrett Jones remained uh, calm and cool. Did not chase a pitch out of the zone. The two pitches he swung at were strikes. And it helps the Yankees pick up. He gets himself a run batted in the easy way. Bases loaded walk. No pinch hitter for Steven Drew. So as again, lefty against lefty. And a strike. Strike three. Drew down looking. Well, there has not been a ball put in play by the Yankees this inning. Four walks and now a called third strike. Yep, it did have the corner, and Drew is caught looking. Well, here's D.D. Gregorius. It's a 3-3 game. Final game of this three-game set. Gregorius, a very aggressive hitter. Anything close on his first pitch, he's going to swing. From a breaking ball for a strike. I should have said aggressive on a fastball. Oh, and two. You've got dueling chance breaking out here at the Camden Yard. Let's go, Yankees, and let's go, O's.
Breaking ball. Did he check his swing? Yes, he did, said the crew chief Jerry Mills at third. You can see definitely a check. Still nothing put in play this inning. We have not heard the crack of the bat. Yankees 0 for 7 with runners in scoring position today. To Murphy. Yeah, Michael, when you look out at the Baltimore bullpen, there's look, there's nobody warming up. So it's not as if Buck Showalter had somebody to go to if Joe Girardi sent up a right handed hitter. Joe probably wants to keep his defense intact. You know, we said 0 for 7 with runners in scoring position. It's actually 1 for 8 because they had three straight singles in the second inning. Uh -huh. And the Yankees have a 5 3 lead. Well, you can say the Yankees finally got a right handed hitter up there against Brian Mattis. And I'll tell you, Manny Machado came very close to making a good play. This ball is rifled off of his glove. And because it slowed down so much, it enabled the Yankees to pick up a couple runs, turns into a double for John Ryan Murphy. As we look at it on Yesmo, brought to you by your Mercedes Benz Tri State dealers. If you get it by Machado, you can get it by anybody. There are the two runs scoring, and the Yankees jump out in front. So Mattis walked Jones, struck out Drew and Gregorius. The Yankees got a right handed hitter up there in John Ryan Murphy, and he doubles in two runs. And they stay with Mason Williams, the lefty. Runners on second and third, two outs. Mason is 0 for 2. Popped up left side. And JJ Hardy makes the play, but the Yankees take the lead. Three runs, four walks, one hit, two men left. We're halfway through. Yanks up by two.
presents the Joe Girardi Show as the Yankee skipper sizes up the AL East after the series against the O's. Plus, get his take on who the Yankees selected in the MLB first year player draft. It's all new today after the postgame, and it's only on Yes. All right, so the Yankees, with one hit, scored three runs to take the lead. They led 1-0. They were down 2-1. Then it was 2-2. Orioles went up 3-2. And with three runs in the fifth, Yankees up 5-3. Warren still on the mound. Jimmy Paredes leads off, and he takes a strike. Now, Paredes is a switch hitter, but he's much better left hand. Doesn't get a chance to start very often against right handers. And a base hit to start off the fifth. He loves the fastball. He gets one here. Lines at the right field for base hit. Right. It's his 11th hit against the Yankees this year. Jones one for two, single, scored a run in the first, grounded to second in the third. Good changeup. Jones out in front. Popped up and a foul ball fouls untouched and into the stands. Seems when Adam Jones gets uh, two strikes on him, he's more apt to go the other way. Now he's hit the ball to the right side of second base on the ground twice. Once the runner is in motion. Open up the right side. He got a base hit the second time up. He grounded to Stephen Drew at second. He's down 0 and 2 here. And it chases a high fastball for the first out. An aggressive hitter, Adam Jones does not walk very often. He saw fastball up in his eyes. Good pitch from Adam Warren. Expanding the strike zone. Adam Jones cannot get on top of that one. He needed a ladder. And he still blows the ball. <laughs> Every once in a while, he'll do that while catching a, a fly ball. Chris Davis takes inside. Davis struck out. In the third inning, he's now struck out 20 times against the Yankees this year. No other big league team has struck out anyone more than 16 times. But really, no shock. He is a he's a home run and a swing and a miss guy. He's a basically all or nothing. You're going to have to take the strikeouts along with the productivity. Uh, two years ago, he finished second in the league and MVP, but sh struck out an awful lot, 190 plus times. This year, he's on pace for even more. Well, the Orioles are, are looking at this year not not so much as the window is closing, but there's going to be a different window. Chris Davis is a free agent. Matt Weeters is a free agent. Wei and Chen is a free agent. I think, I, think, I think they've got 10 players. In total, yeah, who can be uh, free agents at the end of the year? So they're going to have a different look at to their ball club next year. Jason Shreve is up for the Yankees in their bullpen, and the Orioles 
are not into paying the top dollar to compete to keep their guys. And you saw it last year. They let Nelson Cruz go. They let Nick Marquez go. They let Andrew Miller go. And they just move on. And Tommy Hunter's a free agent out of the bullpen. Last night started Bud Norris, I believe, is a free agent. That's true. And those O's did fly the coop and made a lot of money doing it. This goes back to the early days of free agency. I, I don't know if many Yankee fans are aware of the fact that Reggie Jackson played one year for Baltimore before becoming a free agent, then signing with the Yankees. And the reason why he was traded from Oakland to Baltimore was because he was be going to become a free agent. And the owner of the A's, Charlie Finley, was not going to pay him and several other players in that team and let them all go. It was in the early days of free agency. And Davis walks. Charlie Finley was dead set against free agency, and, and his proposal was the owners recoiled at, and secretly the players wanted no part of it. He said, let's make everybody a free agent every year yeah, and flood the market, and the prices will not be as high. And the owners did not want to risk that. The players said, please don't offer that. <laughs> so they didn't listen to Charlie Finley, and this is the system we have now. Yeah, the leader of the Players Association at the time was Marvin Miller, and Marvin knew that Having a limited number of free agents out there every year would increase the salaries for the players over the years. And, uh, you know, but I, I don't think free agency is such a bad thing. It keeps baseball in the in the news all winter long, which some of these star players, where are they going? All the sports benefit from it in well, that sense. Reimold swings and misses. Reimold two runs single in the first, walked and scored in the fourth. And the owners uh, became better businessmen, I felt. If, uh, Realize how to maximize the profits out of their own stadiums, TV deals, and whatever. And uh, I'm not saying that free agency alone has driven baseball. Was a nine billion dollar industry now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not bad. The 0-1. Good pitch. 0-2. Adam Warren has to fight through this now. That he had back to back one, two, three innings in second and third. All the other innings, he's kind of struggled a bit. Had to work out of trouble. 5 3 Yankees were in the bottom of the fifth inning. Laid off that pitch, not a bad pitch. Count one and two. Yeah, he's trying to get Rymel to swing and get himself out. Joe Girardi hoping to savage the final game of the series. Be a nicer flight down to Miami. The Yankees to put this one in the win column. Strike three. Rymo down looking. Excellent sequence of pitches from Adam Warren and called by John Ryan Murphy, but that's going to be it for Adam Warren. All those pitches outside, then he sneaks one over the inside corner for call strike three. Obviously, Rymo looking away, thinks that's inside, but it really wasn't, as you can see. So, Girardi not caring at all that this is going to take a win away from Warren. He wants to get a win for the team, so he goes to the bullpen.
Those were the thrilling moments of the game brought to you by Pepsi. Tight moment of the game right here in the bottom of the fifth. Now, as you all know, you have to go five innings as starting pitcher to get the win. And Joe Girardi really didn't care if Adam Warren got the win. He wants the Yankees to get the win. They felt the best way to do it is to bring in the lefty, Jason Shreve, to face Travis Snyder. All right, left it up to Buck Showalter to make a corresponding move. He chooses not to do so. Snyder's going to hit here. The corresponding move would have bring uh, Delman Young to the plate, who's been one of the best pinch hitters in baseball over the last few years. But, you know, we saw Joe Girardi not pinch hit in the top half of the inning. So maybe both managers holding their, their moves close to the vest until they get to the latter stages of the ball game. So first and second, two outs for the O's. Shreve on against Snyder, who's 0 for 2 against Warren. Blocked by Murphy. Well, you've heard Joe say he's, he's left handers. He feels he can get lefties or righties out, but this is the man that uh, he really wants Shreve to get out. But you got a right handed hitter on deck and J.J. Hardy. Nobody's warming up in the Yankee bullpen. One and one. Well, the question is, was that Warren's last start? With the specter of Yvonne Nova hanging over the team, Nova cannot pitch out of the bullpen coming back from Tommy John surgery. Who's the pitcher that goes from the rotation to the bullpen? And right now the bullpen is the area of need for the Yankees with the injury to Andrew Miller and they're still trying to find a bridge to Dylan Batances. Two and two. Well, there is one less left hander out there. Jacob Lincoln sent back to the minor leagues, and Jose Ramirez, a right hander, called up. So there is a, a right handed move out there for Joe Girardi that wasn't there just yesterday. The pitch. Fly ball, left field, long run for Gardner, and he makes the play in fair territory for the final out. No runs to hit, no errors, and two men left on base. Five in the books, 5 3 Yankees. Is the unlikely 1998 World Series MVP 
with all new interviews and eyewitness accounts. Relive all the drama on a new Yankeeography Moments of Glory Wednesday at 11 only on Yes. Nice running play by Gardner to end the bottom of the inning and stop the threat. And Gardner leads off here in the sixth inning against Brian Mattis. Five three Yankees lead. Gardner had a six game hitting streak broken last night, but he got a base hit his first time up, drove in a run with a sacrifice fly. Got himself a nice afternoon going. Out in front. Mattis, a former number one draft pick, came up as a starting pitcher, but found a uh, role in the bullpen. That's been the case for a number of Orioles. Zach Britton had been a starter. Now yeah. he's the closer. Tommy Hunter had been a starter. Yeah. It's. Two two. Strike three. Gardner down looking. Third strike out for Mattis. All three left handed hitters. They missed the target, but he still uh, got the plate. Target was low and away from Joseph. But that was a knee high strike to Brett Gardner. Tyler Wilson called up before the game, warming again, warmed up earlier. After the game, the Yankees head to Miami and they'll get to deal with John Carlos Stanton for the next four games. Two in Miami, two in the Bronx. Been about as hot as the weather lately, too. How many home runs do you have now? 23? He's leading baseball. On, Bry, and Bryce Harper did not play one today. More, yep, 23 home runs. And the pitch. Yes. Four strikeouts so far for Mattis. Hidley helped him out though. He went upstairs to try and get one and swung through it. Well, with Alex Rodriguez coming up. That brings out Buck Showalter, and he's going to go to the right hander. So we'll see Tyler Wilson. Maddox comes on, strikes out four. The lefty departs. And now on to Tyler Wilson against A-Rod when we get back.
So you think about, I think there's been 28 hitters maybe that have 3,000 hits. And, um, he's got a chance to be number 29. Five hits away from being part of that exclusive group. And you look at the numbers, 2001 ribbies, 666 home runs, and five hits away from 3,000. And this is a guy who missed a lot of time with the two hip surgeries. He was suspended all of last year. And the number's still up there with the all-time greats. So here's Tyler Wilson, as we mentioned, called up today before the game. He has been up here and pitched three games before. You would think Alex has a chance, you know, just five hits away. Either to get that those hits in Miami where he grew up or back in New York where he's played for the Yankees for many years. Breaking ball strike. You saw Tyler Wilson in spring training. He pitched a game against the Yankees on March 28th at Steinbrenner Field. And he looked pretty good. Looked like he had a future. Of course, he went down to the minor leagues. He's been up to the big leagues a bit. Back and forth. But now working out of the bullpen. He's been a starting pitcher. Young man out of the University of Virginia. Strikes out A-Rod. So the Yankees go down in order. All three by strikeout. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Yankees lead this one. Five to three. Five to three as the Bombers trying to salvage the final game of this three game set. Be the bottom third of the O's order JJ Hardy, Ryan Flaherty, and Caleb Joseph. A strike on the outside corner. Shreve came on to get the final out of the fifth. So right now the pitcher of record is Chase and Shree because the starter Adam Warren although he left with the lead only pitched four and two third innings. The way the bullpen's configured now. You kind of think Shree might be pitching higher leverage innings as we move along. He's he's been pretty good for them. The one thing he's been able to throw strikes out of the bullpen. Ground ball to second. 
Stephen Drew. One down. Got Hardy out in front, hit it off the end of the bat, rolled it to Drew. And Shreve has now retired 38 of the last 46 batters he's faced. So, as Michael said, he's on a bit of a roll lately. Yankees five runs on seven hits. The Orioles three runs on six hits. Yankees have left seven runners on base, and the Orioles six. A strike to Flaherty. Flaherty's 0 for 2 with a fly ball, the center, and a strikeout. Kind of a slinging type motion. He's got the low 90s fastball, decent slider, and a little split change that he features. So he's got three effective weapons out of the bullpen. There's a well spotted fastball on the outside corner to Flaherty. Let's take a look at the delivery here. You know, nothing really jumps out at you except for the last little bit. There's a little bit of a slinging type motion. It can be disconcerting, certainly for the left handed hitters. There's that split change, and uh, a little bit too far out of the zone. Couldn't get Flaherty to chase. Count goes full. Challenge with a fastball foul back. The Flaherty's hit well against lefties this year. Much better against lefties than he has against right handers. Well, I just checked the numbers at 368. He's only had 19 chances, but seven hits. Tells you he hangs in there. Now before we anoint Shreve. Yeah. As the eventual winning pitcher, it all depends on the outing. Just because you took over for a guy who pitched four and two thirds does exactly. not mean that you automatically get the win. Mm -hmm. It becomes um, up to the official scorer to say who pitched the best. Yeah, you, you have to be effective. And he did get out of the jam in the fifth and now working here in the sixth. Nice crowd, 36,343 on a hot and humid Sunday afternoon in Baltimore. This will be the ninth pitch of the at bat. And he strikes him out. The battle is won by Chase and Shreve. One lefty over another. Fires the fastball. Right down to shoot. See, see if you can hit it. Flaherty was late. Jason Shreve from Las Vegas, Nevada. Joseph swings and misses.
Joseph had the uh, RBI double in the fourth, which gave the Orioles the 3 2 lead at the time. Yankees came back with three in the fifth to take the lead. That's where we are right now at 5 3. Two and one. Think about the. Uh, saw Bryce Harper the other day. He and Shreve had played together. Chris Bryant's from Las Vegas. There's a few other players too. So Las Vegas is becoming a breeding ground for some very good young baseball players throughout the game. How about those Cubbies? Oh, I look, they're seven back. Pittsburgh's in front of them. And St. Louis in front of both of them. Oh, nice pick on the backhand by Headley. And he took a double away from Joseph to end the inning. Orioles go down in order one, two, three. This is as good as it gets. A hot shot and a true throw. We go to the seventh. Great play to end the uh, bottom half of the inning, and you can see this smash handled nicely on the backhand as Headley throws out Caleb Joseph. Here it is coming right at him. Quick hands and a true throw. Mark Teixeira leads off against Tyler Wilson, and the pitch is a strike. Wilson a throwback wearing the stirrups like the old days. Showing the three stripes of orange and then the white. Those are real stirrups and not all in one. White sanitary hose underneath. And maybe they're making a comeback. I like them. My favorite player used to wear them beautifully. No body. Bobby Mercer. Oh man. Dressed to the nines. He, was, he used to show a lot more white. The 2-1. Two, 2-2. Two two. Now the way to share wears his pants. It, they, they said that the player who started the tradition of keeping your pants down low like they are right over the ankles was George Hendrick. Back in the day with the St. Louis Cardinals. Line to short right field. Teixeira's out thanks to the shift for the first out. 
So George back in a day back in the uh, I guess early 80s mid 80s was a trendsetter. But after a while what goes around comes around. <laughs> There's Bobby. Yeah. Oh, that was the way to wear it. Now Adam Jones shows a lot of sock but doesn't have the start look. Yeah, some days he does but today he doesn't. Uh, going with the all black socks today. I'll tell you what though Kenny if it was the NFL they would not allow such individuality. Because they find players if the uniform is not uniform. Don't they have somebody who comes around and looks yes. at every game yeah and right. measures uh, oh, come on the socks and stuff like that. Garrett Jones had a big at bat in the um, the fifth inning when Girardi kept him in with the bases loaded nobody out Mattis the left hander came on and Jones worked a walk to force in a run that tied the game and not only did walk it was a three two pick so there there was some pressure there. According to my major league at bat app. Mm -hmm. Max Scherzer of the Nationals has a perfect game through six innings against the Brewers with 11 strikeouts. And now they're in the top of the seventh and it's four nothing Washington and the Nats are batting. So we'll keep an eye on that and Chris Sheeran will as well back in the studio. The question is how many pitches has he, has he thrown. Well will that matter today. It doesn't seem like it matters as much with Scherzer as it does with others. Yeah, you're right. Fly ball, left field, Reimold. Two outs. You said they're going into the seventh inning? Yes. Nats are batting. Okay. Here's Stephen Drew. Stephen is a one for three today. Single to right. Fouled out to the catcher with runners on first and third and one out. And struck out looking with the bases loaded and nobody out in the fifth. He's left five runners on base. And Tyler Wilson out on the man. The Orioles envision him as a future starter. There's a base hit for Drew. And it will go to the wall. Played out there by Snyder. The throw to second. Not in time. A double for Drew. Well, we told you that the outfielders kind of bunched the gaps here, but anything hit in the corner. You know, it's hit, not hit all that hard. This one uh, had some air time. But watch how quickly Snyder got rid of this. Didn't even step the throw. Has a very strong arm, but couldn't get all that much on the throw. You're going to see Drew coming to your picture here. Headed for two, and he's going to make it. And a nice deke by Hardy. Standing at second as if the ball was not coming, hoping that Drew would slow down. Here's Gregorius, one for three. He singled off the the foot of Mike Wright and came around to score on the second. Nice stab there by Joseph. You know, there was a note on Mark Deshera and Stephen Drew today, and it's come the 
has come to point once again. Both of the majority of their hits are extra base hits. And only one other player has a higher percentage of extra base hits out of the total, and that's Giancarlo Stanton. And we'll see him tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And we'll see you in the bottom of the seventh as Gregorius grounds out the second. No run to hit, no errors. One man left at the end of six and a half. Time for the seventh inning stretch here in Baltimore. But you know what? We're going to stay right where we are to honor America here in Charm City. As part of the Orioles Military Appreciation Program, presented by Geico. And with the support of Orioles first baseman Chris Davis and pitcher Chris Tillman, we are joined today by Geico local agent Wayne Nieberlein and military members representing the Army, Navy, Marines, and Air Force from Fort Meade. We thank them for their service. In honor of our country and all the brave men and women who serve our nation and defend our freedom, we ask that you please rise and join Sergeant First Class Randy White from the United States Army Field Band in singing God Bless America. God bless America. Land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies, to the oceans, quiet with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my He's in good shape uh, yeah. pitch wise. But a base hit for like Carlos Gomez breaks the perfect game up, and of course, the no hitter as well. Now he's working on the shutout. Jason Shreve has pitched an inning in the third, a scoreless ball for the Yankees. He's out there to start the seventh. The Yankees lead five to three. Tighten up the defense. Chris Young takes over in right field for Garrett Jones. And it'll be the top of the Orioles order. Machado, Paredes, and Jones.
You feel the sky. You see the skies darkening, Michael? Is it, or is mm -hmm. it me? No, it's not you. And Justin Wilson. He's uh, getting rid of the Yankee bullpen, the two-tiered bullpen out there in left center field. To Machado, and we will go back to the Yes Network studios and Christian with another update. Well, the Yankees need a win, Chris, to stay even with the Rays, who, as you mentioned, just beat the White Sox 2-1. to one. Joe Girardi takes the ball from Shreve. He will go to the bullpen to bring on the lefty, Justin Wilson, against Paredes when we get back. TriStateBuick.com. By People's United Bank NA, see what know-how can do for you. And by your Tri Honda dealers. Hurry to your local Tri Honda dealer for great deals on the 2015 models. Well, we had mentioned the fact that Jimmy Paredes, despite being a switch hitter, does not get a chance to hit against left-handed pitching very often. And he's not going to get the opportunity here as Delman Young will come off the bench. To face Justin Wilson. There are the numbers on Wilson holding opponents to a 194 batting average, but he's going to have to face maybe the best pinch hitter in the league, at least one of the best. Delvin Young, three for five this year as a pinch hitter, and since coming to Baltimore, he's 13 for 25 as a pinch hitter, and he doesn't waste much time. He's, at first strike, he's usually swinging at. Like that, but he swings and misses. Of course, Wilson has a plus fastball. 365 career. Oof. Joe Torre used to always say that it was very difficult for a former everyday player to become a good pinch hitter. He said one of the best he ever saw was Chris Chambers. Became a pinch hitter with the Braves. Mm -hmm. Be a good pinch hitter. You can stick around for a long time. Ask Lenny Harris, who has the all-time record for pinch hits. And Matty Mona. Mona had it for a while, for a number of years, before Lenny Harris broke that record. And you're more apt to see that those type of players in the National League, where you, there's more pinch hitting. Wilson strikes him out on three pitches. Whoa. 
He sees three. Good morning, good afternoon, and this one, good night. Blew three right on by him. Here's Adam Jones. Adam is one for three. Single to right and scored in the first. Ground ball to second in the third. Struck out in the fifth. Chopped to third. Headley goes to second one. That's all they get. So it gets lead runner. There was a decision there for Henley. He had the out at first base right in front of him, but he decides even on the slow roll, he's going to take the lead runner. And they erase Manny Machado. Manny rolls over, and then Drew steps over. <laughs> well, now watch this. There's a little contact there, and I'm sure Drew doesn't appreciate this. And watch as he steps over. Yeah. <laughs> You know, nothing too vicious, just a reminder. I, I know you're down there. Here's Chris Davis. 1 0. Difference for Wilson here. I mean, he looked very efficient striking out Delman Young on three pitches. But these next two guys, Jones, who he's gotten through, and Davis at the plate now, have already been in the game, so they're they're well loosened up. Swing, miss. A big long helicopter type swing by Chris Davis. Three and one to Davis with Reimold on deck. Lined right at Drew, right into the ship for the final out. No runs, no hits, no errors, one man left. We go to the eighth at 5 3 Yankees.
to the fifth inning. John Ryan Murphy off the glove and Manny Machado at third. This is going to be a bases loaded double. This is going to break a 3 3 tie. That's where we stand right now. That was our T Mobile game changer. John Ryan Murphy's double with the bases loaded. Now I wonder if our producer Bill Bolin knew that John Ryan Murphy was leading off the eighth. What, what brilliance. Uh, yeah, he's. Hyundai scoreboard Yankees lead five to three. Are you saying yes or no? Oh, he's brilliant. Yeah, yes. yeah. Okay. nothing's by accident. See the Astros leading the uh, the Mariners eleven nothing in the sixth, and Lance McCullers Jr. got taken out of the game after five no hit innings. There's a base hit for Murphy. Ninety pitches. So the pitch count monster got him. And he's a brilliant young pitcher. His dad actually pitched for the Yanks for a bit. If I'm not mistaken, McCullers beat the Orioles down in Houston. Yeah, he did. Struck out 11. John Ryan Murphy, three hits today. See, the Yankees going to build the run here. As Mason Williams a bunt. Popped it up straight in the air and a diving play by Chris Davis. That's not how you do it. Squaring, it was a high pitch. Sometimes those are tough to get down on the ground, and certainly in this instance it was. And Chris Davis. When he first came to Baltimore, he wasn't that good at first baseman, but he's worked hard at his craft and has become a very credible fielder at first. Now, I'm not saying he's Mark Teixeira, but uh, he's gaining ground on the Yankee first baseman. Makes a nice place here, a nice play here. Get out, Mason Williams. Brett Gardner. Want to know? John Ryan Murphy is three for four. And he's, he's really done a good job behind yes. the plate. Doesn't play much because Brian McCann is the starter. I think that for a young player, he's had a hard time keeping his swing right, but the 3-4 three, three for four today is heartening. Yeah, he started the day at uh, 208 and just 48 at bats. And now he is at 250. No, here you go. Chop slowly to second. They can just get that one. These teams are playing the game hard. He just went into second base clean but hard. And that's the way the game should be well, played. They're division rivals. They know that uh, this is a big game for both teams. Yankees trying to remain in first place. Orioles trying to gain on them. If not the Rays. Now we might, if this game continues this way, can he get a chance to see Dellen Batanzas in his first appearance as the Yankee closer with the injury to Andrew Miller? He has not pitched in a while. So don't know how many outs Girardi will ask him to get. Up the middle and a base hit for Headley. And that gives A Rod in a bat. This is the point of the game where you're looking for a little cushion. You got a two run lead. You got him to the latter stages. You got the opposition down to six more outs. So A Rod tied the game yesterday or last night with a two run homer. 
push himself over the 2,000 run batted in mark. Strange swing there by Arod. Here's what Michael's talking about. This is uh, maybe his Z swing. Almost like a tennis swing. <laughs> the backhand. I think it's a setup swing. Give me another one out there so I can shoot it to right field. Better swing, same result. Count on two. Yeah, a little bit more off speed from Tyler Wilson. Yankees five, Orioles three, first and second, two man out. Here in the top of the eighth. Every time A Rod comes to the plate, the energy level in any stadium just heats up. Gardner's at second, Headley's at first. Two men out, top of the eighth. Yankees 10 hits, the 06. 5 3 Yankee lead. Wilson deals. That was a setup pitch. And while you're hitting, you're trying to figure out is he set me up to go back outside? Or did he just miss into inside trying to sneak a fastball by me? That's. It's hard to guard both sides of the plate. Up the middle. And Hardy beats Headley to the bag. That'll do it. Yankees no runs, two hits, and two men left. We go to the eighth. Five three Yanks. Post game for a recap of today's series finale and highlights from around the majors. Plus, get reaction from the clubhouse and a preview of the upcoming series with the Marlins and John Carlos Stan. That's all coming up on the WB Mason Yankees post game. Only on yes, Chris Sheeran and Sarah Kustoff do the honors. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Nolan Reimold leads off, and there's a strike. Monday scoreboard 5 3 Yankees lead. Reimold, one for two with a walk, two ribbies, and a run scored today. Wilson got the final two outs of the seventh. Now, this normally would be Dylan Batanz's inning prior to the injury to Andrew Miller, who was closing. 
But you can see Batances is up. But the beginning of this eighth inning, it's going to be Justin Wilson, who did a pretty good job last inning. Yankee fans would know that during the course of this year, these have been the lockdown innings. I mean, Batances in the eighth, primarily in the eighth inning, has allowed one earned run all year. And Miller in the ninth, not many more. Well, most people think that you're not going to miss that much. With Patances taking over from Miller because Patances is pretty outstanding as well. But you could have a nice house on on the island, and if you don't have a bridge to get to it, you'll never live in it. So they've got to be able to get to Dellen Patances yeah, in the ninth inning. You're, you're right. You know, it's like Boardwalk and Park Place. <laughs> They're both nice places to live, but ooh, just out of the reach of John Ryan Murphy. So Batances is like Park Place and Miller is like Boardwalk. Yep. High priced properties. Right next to each other. Like number eight and number nine on the on the street. Good pitch. What's in between the two of them? Electric company? Utility? Luxury tax. Luxury, luxury tax. tax. <laughs> you know, baseball teams do know about luxury taxes. The Yankees do. There's a swing and a miss. And Rymol is out of there. Good pitch by Wilson. Now, the automatic reaction is, well, he's had so much rest, why not bring in Patances? Because this is the third game of 20 in a row. Yeah. So if you get him in here to get six outs, well, he might not be available tomorrow. So you get as much out of Wilson as you can. Mm -hmm. Wade did that one. All right, we saw one of these earlier from Alex Rodriguez. And Travis Snyder shows that you can look very silly up there at the plate. Somebody throws something you're not looking for. Just missed. Ball a second. Drew makes the out. Two way. You would think that he has to have a Wilson glove, right? <laughs> yeah. He's probably had one his whole life. And told people it was personal. <laughs> Wilson on the mound for the Yankees. <laughs> Wilson on the mound for the O's. A Wilson glove. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Wilson. Both of them pitching in menacing situations. <laughs> That's what you did. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and two on Hardy. Hardy one for three today. Strike three. Good job by Justin Wilson. He retires the Orioles in order. One, two, three with two strikeouts. And we go to the ninth.
Justin Wilson. And John Ryan Murphy telling him how he did it. And Stevie Donahue trying to keep his players somewhat cool on a very hot day. Mark Teixeira will lead off against Tyler Wilson. Yankees up five to three. High fly ball, left field, long run for Reimold. And he makes the play, covered a lot of ground. That's part of his tool set. He's got some tremendous speed. It's you know, for a right handed hitter, you watch him go down the line. And he can make just about any play close. He's playing over towards left center. You can see the ball high in the air. They gave him enough time to get over just into foul territory and makes the play. And there is uh, Tyler Wilson applauding the efforts of his left fielder. First at bat for Chris Young took over defensively for Garrett Jones. Jones had an RBI walk and was one for three. Through eight innings, Kenny Max Scherzer has 14 strikeouts. He's still giving up just the one hit. I think yeah. So I'm not sure. All right. Last one I heard of. Let's put it this way he's having a good afternoon. Now, Minnesota and Texas tied 3 3 in the bottom of the sixth as Young hits a fly ball to center. And tell me if you've ever heard of this, Kenny. Mm -hmm. Minnesota hit three triples in an inning and scored one run. Somebody overslid third base. I don't know how it happened, <laughs> but three triples, one run. No, if you overslid third, you, you only get a double, right? Well, yeah. if you get a triple, right, and then there's a fly ball, you get thrown out trying to score, score on a sack and then line. two triples in a row, and yeah. you get you get well, a run. Yeah, that could happen. Two down, and here's Stephen Drew. Tyler Wilson looking to go three and a third. And he does. A ground ball a second. And Wilson keeps it right there. And the Yankees will turn to their closer, Dellen Patances, to try to close this one out. The last two years. I mean, he's been really successful pitching the way he pitches. So he's a guy that we'll use in the ninth and we'll just kind of move everyone back. We'll move Willie back. We'll move Shreve back. And 
add Martin to that mix and use the other guys, you know, to get to those guys. Well, Girardi makes it sound easy. It's not today. It has been. It's been Shreve and Wilson, and now they turn it over to Patances to protect the two-run lead here in the ninth. Yankees trying to avoid a sweep at the hands of the O's. So Ryan Flaherty will start it off. Flaherty is 0 for 3 today with a fly ball to center and two strikeouts. And the lefty David Lowe is on deck to pinch hit for Caleb Joseph. And a strike. Of course, one of, the, one of the keys to being a good closer or a good relief pitcher in general is come out of bullpen and start dealing strikes right away. We saw it for years and years with Mariano Rivera. And the first two pitches are in there. Patances last pitched on June 9th against the Nationals. He pitched one inning. So today is the 14th. The 0 2. Now, this is something new for Patances. He has never entered the game in the ninth inning in a save situation. So, to begin the ninth inning. Now, Patances and Miller battled for the closing position in spring training, and although Jordy never said that Miller won it, you can see that Miller. Was closing and then he finally admitted it, but now Miller could be out close to a month. But Tances is the closer and has to come through. Up the middle, grabbed by Drew, fires the first, a backhand scoop by Teixeira for the first out. That was a tough play. And Stephen Drew throwing off balance across his body and Teixeira with the scoop on the other end. And they get Ryan Flaherty by a step at first base. He cuts in front of Gregorius. And to share on the other end, sure handed as usual, comes up with a throw in the dirt, and that's out number one. The whole thing in this inning is to keep that tying run from coming to the plate. So Murphy goes out and talks with Patances. David Lowe, the pinch hitter for Caleb Joseph. Joseph had an RBI double in this game. He had a feeling if Flaherty had gotten on, you would have seen Matt Wieters instead of David Lowe. Lowe had a home run yesterday. This one takes Lowe 1 0. Oh. 5 3 Yankees. Yankees have five runs on ten hits. The Orioles three runs on six hits. Orioles have won six in a row. The Yankees have lost three in a row. Round ball to Drew. He backhand sets two outs. And that'll bring up Manny Machado. Machado is one for three with a walk. Also run score. The O's are down to their final out. Matt Wieters has made an appearance in the on deck circle. The Yankees really don't want to see him till their next series. That would be for Delman Young, who pinch hit for the DH Paredes last time up and struck out against Justin Wilson. The 1 0. 
2 0, 97 mile an hour fastball. Breaking ball with no bite, 3 0. Looks like he's trying to uh, overthrow on this last out. When Machado's up there with a 3 0 count, he'll be taken. Maybe two pitches. Fastball strike, 3 and 1. And he walked him. So that will bring Weeders up as the time runs. Switch hitter or bat from the left side against Dellen Patances. Yankees will not hold Machado on. And Mark Desher signaling to the outfield that he's going to be guarding the line. They want to keep that run off of second base. So the shift on for readers, three infielders on the right side, only Headley on the left side. Adam Jones is on deck. Runner goes, pitches high, he'll take second on defensive indifference. Not used to pinch hitting, and it shows. And a strike. You now, Waiters has put up decent numbers since coming back. Only 23 at bats, but he has eight hits. First time he's ever faced Patances. Now he sees his 97 mile an hour fastball to count one and two. The O's down to their final strike. This is Rita's first uh, pitch hit appearance of the year. And the pitch. Swing and a miss, and the Yankees win. Dylan Batances in his first try as the Yankee closer. Nails it down and the Yankees avoid a sweep.